Uh, so today I'm going to be talking on a bit of a less technical, softer topic, um, but it's scratching your own itch using uh, Go and XBAR. Um, one of the reasons I'm talking about it is because uh, building tools for yourself is rewarding um, and it's also helpful. Uh, I'm not going to be getting deep into the details of XBAR, um, but their documentation is uh, fairly strong and I will describe the pieces that I show. So uh, to start off, um, let's talk about why um, you're here. Uh, you initially uh, probably decided to uh, pick up Go, um, learn a little bit more about it, and you go the normal routes, uh, read the books, all of the books, and now you're probably closer to a, uh, a Go reference document or a scholar on the topic, uh, but you may not actually be able to implement things yet. You just know about them out of context. Um, you've watched video tutorials, and now you are fully capable of making the world's best to-do list or a Hello World web server. Um, and you've probably written, uh, read a lot of the written tutorials that are online. Um, you've become extremely good at following line-by-line uh, -line instructions and your touch typing skills have much improved. Um, but all jokes, all jokes aside, um, all these resources are really great. And especially when you're getting started, um, it's, a, it's a really great way to go. Uh, the people giving their time to create them uh, do sacrifice their own personal time, and it's what makes the community uh, so special. So um, having all these available uh, allows people to learn. Everyone learns in different ways, um, and usually a combination of many. And then as you go, um, you need different things on top of that. So all of these provide uh, a lot of different resources. Um, so what I'm talking about today, uh, if this sounds similar to you, um, is the plateau that you tend to hit uh, after um, you've gotten through these and you're trying to move over to the next stage of, of getting prepared to start looking at entry level positions or things like that. Um, and a lot of what you hear is, we'll build things. Uh, okay, so build things, but, but what do I build? And how do I decide uh, you know, what direction to take it? Uh, and that's where XBAR comes in, in my opinion. Uh, what it is, is it's a, uh, application built by Mar uh, Matt Ryer um, that allows you to uh, build and script things that appear in the Mac OS menu bar. Um, it originally started off as BitBar, uh, made the top of Hacker News. And if you want to know more about the details, I know Matt has given a couple talks and a lot of podcast interviews where he touches on it. Um, he even says, you know, uh, this is the example from the site and this is his quote on it. So um, from there, uh, why XBAR? Well, the nice thing about XBAR is that it allows you to write uh, these Go programs. Um, you can do it compiled or scripted. And um, I'm just going to talk mainly about the compiled today. The scripted stuff, there's a couple of bugs um, related to uh, writing Go in a script format. Um, but it allows you to have an immediate feedback loop. You're going to be writing things that you are taking in as the user of. And so essentially, you're, you're dog fooding. Um, the code that you're writing, and you're going to be the best criticizer of that. And it hurts less when you're the critic of yourself. Um, as an example, if you've ever looked at a line of code you've written, um, not knowing it was yours, and asking who the heck wrote this, and then you type in git blame and realize it was you, it hurts a lot less than someone else giving you a hard time. So uh, to get started quickly, um, you go to the docs on XBAR, uh, you dutifully and academically pour through all of the details or you just scan it quickly, find the piece you need, and start building things, um, and pay for it later when you get stuck. But <laughs> the uh, basics of it are this. You, you just print line um, out of your script, and it formats into this menu bar application. Uh, so the place that you start, uh, obviously, would be um, just mapping the code, basic print line statements, to kind of see how this transfers into the output of the application. Um, and here I have some more examples. Uh, as you go further down, these lines are um, just examples of different options that you have to try and play with different features in the application. Um, this piece right here essentially gave me this in my menu bar. Um, so it was just me testing how different things fall, fall into place. The next step after this is clearly mischief. Uh, as developers, we tend to have the natural ability to want to use things in ways that they are not meant to be used and just see what's available. 
So um, this is an example. I just wanted to see if I stacked as much stuff as I could in the top part that was going to come out in the menu bar, what would happen? Would it overload the menu bar? Actually, no, it wouldn't. It, it, it animates through the items based on you know what's there, which is actually a really nice thing. Um, doing this, you kind of go through discovery and figure and feel out how things work with this application. In this case, it would be a 30 second loop. Um, every one of these top three items will rotate every 10 seconds. Uh, so from here, the next stage would be free will. This is the point where you have the basics of the tool, and this is the part that's most important. Um, you're going to uh, have problems that you want to solve, and they're not going to be designated on, I want to learn A, B, and C. They're going to be designated on, I want to solve this problem. And what that's going to allow you to do is shove yourself into places that you're not comfortable with. It's going to allow you to come across things that are uh, going to teach you why certain things are idiomatic and go. And it's going to force you to learn reference documentation, reference the language. Um, so this is what I did. Uh, and parting thoughts, a personal example is uh, Jira. We've all been there. It's not a bad tool. But sometimes, hypothetically, you work at a place that has a process that is, sounds like it's agile, mixed with waterfall, mixed with a five-lane traffic jam, and a dumpster fire in the middle. But you need to make it work. So what you do is you build a tool that scrapes through the API, uh, puts things in a neater format of how you can work with them, keeping the business happy because you're still accomplishing things, and allowing you to deliver on products um, as well. So then these are an example of a tool you would build. So the pieces are all in there. Uh, there's environment variables. There's API calls, sh calls out to shell, HTTP links, and on and on. Um, and also, if you get bored from that, you can move over to Wales, which is what XBAR is built on. It allows you to build uh, full applications. And at the end of it all, you get to learn. I wanted just to say thanks to Matt and Lee Anthony.